this isn't the sound we've come to expect from a bathtub, the racing kind that is. In recent history, bathtubs have always been a two-stroke, eight-horsepower outboard engine strapped to the transom of a custom-built bath bathtub, and that's what we've always raced. Now we can't get our eight-horse two-strokes anymore, so it's time for a change. And this is certainly a change. Dan Fox and Ben Friday make up part of the aggressive salmon bathtubbing team that built their first tub about seven years ago. They've been racing ever since. Bathtubbing in Nanaimo is entering its 49th year with the great race taking place on July 26th. And this is the first time a boat with an inboard motor has been entered. The boat that we have been using, uh, that we built many years ago, is very heavy. And so every year when we you know, are carrying it to and from the water, every time we test it in race, we're cursing it and we're thinking in the back of our mind that we need to do something and, you know, and so this year was the year. This is a custom 12.1 liter fuel tank, 1984 fire extinguisher, stainless. Two years ago, uh, I was coming back from Winchelsea. Uh, our tub, our original aggressive salmon tub, uh, 659, is quite a heavy tub, and I uh, stuffed it. We in bathtubbing call them torpedoes. Uh, in powerboat racing, they call it stuffing a boat, and that's when uh, the bow of your boat ends up, you know, hitting the water first, catches a breaker, and you die. Uh, so traditionally, in powerboat racing, high performance racing, they've moved their center of gravities forward and that allows the boat to uh, ride a lot ni nicer and it minimizes this uh, torpedoing. There are three classes to bathtub racing, stock, modified and super modified. What Aggressive Salmon has done definitely fits into the super modified category and is in alignment with rules outlined by the Loyal Nanaimo Bathtub Society. The traditional uh, place to mount, uh, especially in the super mods, they mount their, out, their outboard, the power head is way up here. So that puts the center of gravity quite, quite high on a super modified boat. Anybody who's running a, a surface piercing prop is going to want to have that prop halfway in the uh, water. So we've actually placed our motor farther forward and it's very low in the boat. It's as low in the boat as it can go. So the big chunk of aluminum is, is a weight that keeps us hopefully balanced properly. This custom build has six different props available and the pilot will need to straddle the drive shaft like a snowmobile or a motorcycle. Typical tub fashion has pilots kneeling or resting on one hip. It's harder to get the engines that we've been using um, so there needs to be some alternative to the engines that we've been using. I'm not sure if this is this is it though because there's a lot of complexity. Uh, you know, it's not just taking an engine and, and bolting it onto your boat as it, as it is with, you know, the regular bathtubs. Uh, you really have to develop an entire drive line from the engine, you know, and then there's a, a clutch and a shafting and then there's support for all that and then, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of details. And the devil, they say, is in the details. On the day of our visit, it had not yet been run on a water trial. Best case scenario is that we're going 35 miles an hour and have no issues. Uh, worst case scenario, where you know it's not so much the speed that's the worst case scenario; it's more w the things that could break. The goal is to go absolutely as fast as I can hold on to the tub. With further tweaks and a few water trials before the big race, Dan and the team hope to hit speeds of 35 miles per hour. With a new finish line in Maffeo Sutton Park and a new tub design aiming to cross it first, bathtub racing in 2015 should be one for the history books. For Go in Nanaimo, I'm Kate Bergen.